Yes. Altered Carbon. Altered yes. Carbon. Hang Stong in the first episode. <laughs> well, now I'm hooked. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. I'm Carly Bird. I'm yeah. Sven Svensson. <laughs> and I come in by these. <laughs> <laughs> this is the special one year anniversary shindig. We have Matt Caslin and we have Seth Garland. Um, these two uh, poor bastards decided to join me on this whole shindig. Carly will be returning for another episode that we'll have. And of course, the future episodes because she kind of makes a show. What? <laughs> it was a beautiful <laughs> intro. You're smiling like something like I don't know something. He touched my elbow. It was a moment. He touched my elbow. I'd like to make that clear. <laughs> Matt, what are we drinking tonight? Oh, geez. What are we almost Ooh. spilling? Yeah, tonight? what are we almost spilling? We're drinking rum. Uh, mm -hmm. Diplomatico. Good stuff. And then, guys, I keep messing it up. I'm going to take a picture, and you're going to see it right here of the bottle of what this looks like, and I'll link in the episode description down below to like where you can get it. I'm assuming it's an American brand. If not, you can buy it overseas. Um, <clears throat> huge shout out to our English listener um, for the, uh, I think my boyfriend is haunted episode that reached out about the wine we were drinking. I have no idea why, but that episode is doing so well. And it really shows me the demographic. It's a captivating of my title. <laughs> it really also shows the demographic of our listeners, where I have all these episodes of Shark Attacks, whatever, no listeners. And as soon as it's like, I think my boyfriend's honored, that spice. Like, okay, I, at least I know the genre. That one, either that girl was very unlucky <clears throat> in picking, what was it, three haunted boyfriends yeah. in a row, or there is something attached to her. <laughs> I think something attached to her, hundred yeah. percent. Like the idea, like you can't blame, like jeff and then jacob and then frankie and be like it's all you guys i literally just hit the lottery on that do you or think that's you. something she has to divulge at the beginning of a relationship kind of like an std to let them know that's just always a hard moment as a single person it's like, how many of this is the other people <laughs> how long when you put up with that me? though <clears throat> how would i well inform? let me let me add some context to this thing you told me one time, because I don't actually watch How I Met Your Mother, mm -hmm. that Barney Stenson once said, like, there's a hot to crazy ratio. Yes. Is being haunted in the crazy section? I'm assuming it is. So at what level is it, like, not worth it? I'm pretty sure with haunted, that's, like, immediate. <laughs> yeah, it's not that hot to be haunted. <laughs> no, but it, I would say it's more like in the crazy, because you could be hot and haunted. Yeah, the double H. I, again, I don't know. And you that... could get to see it though. So if Alex and Kayla's heads are twirling. How long would you like? I don't know. Like name the haunted thing. I don't care what Their it is. Heads are twirling. <laughs> the exorcism. Like how like long? Like doing the full spin. No, I'm saying the full exorcism movie. They're going <clears> through all that stuff. They're doing the throw up. They're talking. They're like they know. They're basically bragging on you the whole time. The whole exorcism movie. If you guys know what I'm talking about, first one is really a classic. How long could you keep up with that for? Go. How long could I keep up with it before doing anything about it or before leaving? Ooh, I like that. Uh, yes, to both. I feel like it would literally be a day. <laughs> like five minutes. You're gone. Get out of here. <laughs> like, <laughs> Not even going to call a priest. <laughs> she like, does that weird backwards, like upside down walk down the stairs. First, I'm going out of the house. <laughs> I you said, as soon as she starts twitching weird, she's gone. <laughs> I mean, if we're talking about the first movie, cool property, I'm moving out of the American South because <laughs> those types of things don't happen if you're just out of that area. <laughs> Try the Midwest sure. for a little bit. See sure. if that goes better. You know? I don't know? So as soon as Kayla sneezes, he's leaving. I didn't say what sneeze. About... I said the backwards walk down the stairs thing. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Suggest we try a new place. I don't know. You see, you see, he's going to stay with Alex longer. It's not Alex's fault. It's the house. It's the carpet or something like that. The Yours American like, South's fault. Yeah, but how many times have you watched the movie where they think it's the house and then they move and guess what? It's still there. I have never seen a movie where they you actually lies. have a fantastic, <laughs> like a reasonable like <clears throat> resolution. Oh, Insidious. Yeah, I didn't see that one. I'm done with him. <laughs> it's, it's actually really good. And it the fact is, good. like, so basically the idea, but though, was like what you're saying, like the entity was stuck to the person. Actually, yeah, the person. Yeah. So at that point, yeah, I get it. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how long I could stay with her for. If her head spins, I'm out. Because if I don't get a good night's sleep, I'm done. Period. Like, 
the owl spin yeah the owl spin or like uh, if it keeps me up at night honestly i don't know why that's the, like like that is a deal breaker i know you're gonna hear this episode so i don't fucking care i'm interested but flexible yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can take a drink. On. It's uh, yeah. I guess a pro. But <laughs> that neck dude, <laughs> she's, she's crawling on the ceiling backwards, like. But she's flexible. That could it's be like, handy though. <laughs> you know, like, scale the side of the house, clean the gutters. Teach me your ways. <laughs> they like got Spider Man, you know. It's not bad. And they say marriage and love isn't dead. Look, they're All right, so maybe reasons. I'll give it a week before I call the priest <laughs> and get a pool of holy water. At least try to make this work for me. <laughs> <laughs> she's crazy, but goddamn, she's flexible. That is a great, that's a t-shirt. We're not actually going to take that. And speaking of crazy, we Seth has a really crazy story for you tonight. Seth, what do you got for us? What do I got? I got... Uh, two stories actually. Do you need me um, to unlock your iPad? No, I've <laughs> got it open. Um, because I have Tommy's passcode that he apparently uses for everything, and that passcode is <laughs> that font's a little small for you. Yeah, zoomed in. All right, <laughs> you yeah, let's make fun of the blind kid. <laughs> it's funny, is he's blind, and he's in the Air Force, but I'm not gonna tell you what he does. You just Think about that for a minute. <laughs> it's like Tom Cruise. Like, uh... <laughs> I am not a pilot. <laughs> Anyways, uh, got two uh, short stories here. Uh, and the topic, uh, viewers may be aware, they may not. It's more of a kind of a recent thing, um, particularly online. Um, came about in 2013 when a reporter. Actually, I forget for which news article um, wrote just a, a piece about his experience with what's known as black eyed kids. Ooh. Uh, and like I said, it's been more of a recent thing since that kind of report came out and people, you know, writing their own stories on Reddit and other things. But there have apparently been stories brought like to attention from older folks uh, claiming they experienced this like back in the 40s and 50s and stuff. So, I will uh, start off with the first story. This is the tale of Halloween. It had been a slow trick-or-treat night in our neighborhood that evening, which is pretty odd in and of itself. We usually have kids from different areas dropped off in our neighborhood and have a constant parade at our door. That night, I'd say we had no more than eight or ten groups of kids come by the entire night. It was about 9.30 p.m., and my husband and I were sitting in our family room, watching some of those ghost shows based on supposedly actual events. Like I said, I don't believe in that stuff, but I do like a good ghost story now and then, and it was Halloween and all. We hadn't had any activity at the door in over half an hour, and it was getting late, so we decided to turn the porch light on and let our dog Chloe out of her crate. Chloe is an American bulldog, and she is very docile. We only put her in her crate because we were afraid she'd try and get out to play with all the kids, and I didn't want to have to chase after her down the street. Also, we didn't want her to scare any of the kids because she would look a little intimidating to the younger kids. So, I turned the outside light off, let Chloe out, and she followed me back to the couch and lay down at my feet. It was getting close to 10 p.m. when my husband decided he had had enough fun for the night and was going to go upstairs, take a shower, and get ready for bed. After all, it was Thursday, and he still had to get up early the next day. My teenage son was out with his friends at a local haunted house and wasn't expected back for another hour or so, so that left me alone on the couch with Chloe. Now. Just because I don't believe doesn't mean those shows don't freak me out a bit. And being alone, now watching, I'd have to say I was kind of on edge, as it were. It wasn't long after I heard the upstairs water for the shower turn on when there came a light knock, knock, knock at the front door. My initial reaction was, what the hell, really? It's almost 10, go home. But soon, <laughs> I'd be kind of upset about that too. Kids I'd be can. a cranky old woman. Like, what is going on right now? It's Halloween, everybody. Let's lighten up. Yeah, ten o'clock. I... Come on, Thursday night. Crazy. How, what hour does it usually stop? Like nine, I think. 
I don't remember. And at some point, you just leave the bowl outside, you know? That's true. If she didn't want people to knock, she should have just put... Or turn her light off. Or turn your light off. Yeah. But this is brought to you by the old people of America. Look, Killing getting fun. up there in age. Got some grumpies with me on the <laughs> pod tonight. Wow. Yeah, wow. I'm in bed by 10. Dang. You gotta yeah. sleep. That's tough. <laughs> but you also hate kids. That makes sense. Continue. <laughs> It's why do you think that I picked this story? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, my initial reaction was, what the hell? Really? It's almost 10. Go home. But soon an uneasy feeling came over me. Why the knock? Our doorbell glows in the dark and without the porch light. Oh, so they did have their porch light off. Mm, I'd be pissed. Uh, without the porch light, it would be extra obvious to anyone there. I paused. I couldn't really just ignore it. Our front door has a uh, big beveled glass panel and anybody right at the door could see in enough to see someone was in the family room watching TV. It would be pretty rude for me to just sit there and not answer it. Knock, 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 again from the door. I glanced down at Chloe and she was gone. <laughs> uh, my gaze followed her usual path to the front door, expecting her to be on her way there as she normally does. Nothing. She wasn't there. Where the hell's Chloe? Can we say who is Chloe? Chloe's the dog. Chloe's yeah. the dog. Chloe's the dog. <clears throat> so her husband's upstairs showering. Her so for, teenage for, son for the away. Yeah, for the people at home. So Chloe's the dog. Uh, Seth is the middle-aged woman in this marriage. It's probably failing. <laughs> they hate Halloween and they hate kids. They don't hate Halloween. They hate late trick-or-treaters. It's reasonable. The man's got to be up early for work. This has got a terrible job. <laughs> Anyways, Chloe wasn't there after the second knocking. I stood up to look around the room uh, and found her, crouching by the back door like she was wanting out. However, she never asked to go out like that. She always comes and licks my hand or puts her head on my knee. This was totally out of character for her, and I have to say, heightened my anxiety. Chloe, crate, I said. She just turned back to look at me like, hell no, lady, I ain't moving. <laughs> Sassy pool dog. <laughs> <laughs> I yelled up to my husband, but if he was already in the shower, I knew there was no chance of him hearing me. Knock, knock, knock. About that time, a car drove down our street and cast just enough light on the door to where I could see the silhouettes of two small children through the glass. Bastards. Just the worst. <laughs> I instantly felt relief. <laughs> Wait, what? Which, did she not expect it to be? It's <laughs> Halloween. It's 10 o'clock. Like, that seems why you're angry. But she felt relief knowing it was... Oh, maybe it's because they were small children. <laughs> oh, I don't want to deal with yes. the big kids. I can fuck those kids up. <laughs> <laughs> I can kick a little child. No. <laughs> so, I instantly felt relief. It was just some kids, probably a couple of my neighbors on their way back home that wanted to stop by and show me their costume or something. I headed to the door and looked back to make sure Chloe wasn't going to follow. What a great watchdog, I thought to myself as she just sat there. Is this the Chloe story here? Like, my goodness. No, it's always about the dog. It is always about the dog. You know. I turned on the porch light when I got to the door, and sure enough, I could see through the glass that it was a couple of pretty small kids. A little late for such young ones, I thought, and I began to wonder about what kind of parents would let their kids run the streets that late at night. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Julie Garland. She was amazing. <laughs> she was. Uh, I only still is. Still, <laughs> still is. She, <laughs> she is not a ghost fight yet. <laughs> you I, look great, by the way. <laughs> I only opened the door enough to where I could block Chloe's escape if she decided to grow some balls, which was only about two feet. Wait, her balls. <laughs> Wait a minute. Those Wait, balls need to be at no. least four feet. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have big on it. She opened the door only about two feet so she couldn't get out. <laughs> Those really balls gonna... just wouldn't fit. <laughs> they wouldn't. <laughs> what struck me immediately as odd was the kids weren't wearing any costumes. They were in normal street clothes. Also, no huh. customary trick-or-treat either. I began to feel <laughs> uneasy again. It was a girl and a boy. The girl to my left was older. I'd say about 11 or 12. Okay. Still I could, trick or treating age. Yeah. I could tell she was blonde, but I couldn't make out any distinct 
features as our lights are from high above and on columns at the front of the porch, so most of the light was coming from behind them. Hmm. I had not opened the door wide enough for any light from inside to hit them directly. The boy was younger uh, and about a foot shorter, I'd say eight or nine, and looked to have light brown hair. The girl very politely spoke up. Ma'am, can we please come inside and use your phone to call our mom? As she spoke, something in the pit of my stomach was telling me something was wrong. What kid, even at that age, doesn't have a cell phone of their own these days? <gasps> All right. Good parents. <laughs> no, let's live. Let's... <laughs> oh, here we go, here we go. Come on. Oh, Matt, Matt, what Not everyone's here? got phones. What is that? A nine-year-old? You just expect no, them all to... The, the other one's nine, year old. though. Nah, oh, come on. These days, a 12 year old. Okay, I this context, lady. Context. No, not always. Where is a story? That's a lot to assume. Is this Mayberry? Is this like Loray? Is this Loudoun say. County? I think that's important. It doesn't say. Loudoun County kids, I bet them all are on TikTok at age nine. <laughs> Rhino! <laughs> <laughs> I really hope these are played as one continuous thing, or there's going to be three episodes of us randomly yelling Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's just a lot to assume. A 12 year old and a 9 year old without a cell phone? Who would have guessed? Uh, this apparently, guys, is the old person no. episode no. where it's like, no, oh, no, hey. I didn't get one until 7th grade. Was when, was like when do you go to bed? Okay, but you're she's going to bed their age. early on Halloween Eve? Why are the lights on? Kids have cell phones? What about these newspapers nowadays? Like, this is the old person episode. No, Thank remember, you. her porch light was off. Oh, that is true. Yeah, it was off. says, don't come trick-or-treating. No, but when she just said it, the porch light was well, on. She turned it, it on after they knocked, but initially okay. the porch light was off. Mm. Well, anyways, apparently they don't have a cell phone, which is either normal or not normal. It's a video shot. I couldn't remember the last time I had anybody ask to use my home phone. Um, hun, don't you have a phone of your own you can call your mom on? I asked. Uh, this was when things got really weird. Both kids turned to look at one another like they were going to say something, but neither ever spoke. They both turned back to me, and the girl said, We're Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> My cell phone battery doesn't have any charge left in it. Can we please come inside and call our mother? <clears throat> We're alone out here, and my brother is scared. Okay, 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 pause real quick. At that point, is she a cunt if she says no? Like, at what point is, like, she in the wrong here? This is a weird, like, does she think it's a... Yeah, you don't necessarily need to... <laughs> I feel like... Easy whore. Listen, I don't care if you and your little kid have no phone battery. You ain't coming in-house. Yeah, I feel like it's very, like, reasonable to let... What, what time, what year is this in? At 10 p.m. October, there's two, Halloween. Okay. What? There's two children on Halloween that come to your door and say, like, can I use your phone? Like, you don't have to let them in inside. You just, like, hand it to them and be like, okay, it's here you no, go. No, That's no recent. problem. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Like, in 2003, it's different because we had, we had cell phones on everybody on a cell phone. So yeah. she might not have a cell phone. Like she just flip it out of her pocket. But if it's like yesterday, yeah, okay, fine. Like, yeah, that's I mean, probably. even if it's today, like they might have cell phones, but it might be dead. They might have left it. They might not have brought well, it. What he's like, saying is like the the woman, the woman, yeah. the door. She for sure has a cell phone. Okay, oh, yeah. yeah. That like she could the offer. way it was structured is like, can we use <clears throat> your phone? As in like it's a landline. It's like okay, that's different. If it is like like this year, sort of speak thing, like yeah, you should have a regular cell phone. Even like, if it's a landline, no one's got like the cord to the wall like oh sorry it only reaches 10 feet like <laughs> actually guys comment down below win a prize here who actually still has a landline with a with a freaking cable please let us know down below how weird you are if you actually have one of those <laughs> i don't think my parents have one hooked up but they definitely hey, have hey, one in a huge drawer shout out somewhere. to julian lee garland for being Why? 200 years old uh, and still having Why? one I don't know. In, in a drawer? In an emergency, like drawer. if the other one. <laughs> in an emergency, let's use the. No, they had the one, like, uncorded one. <laughs> yeah. If the other landline were to go out and your cell phone, for some reason, is smashed, I don't know. In that scenario, I think the, the drawer phone wouldn't work either. <laughs> the drawer phone would absolutely work. It always It's like a Nintendo 64. That thing always works, no matter how old it is. Blow on it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't need electricity. When things don't work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, t-shirt. Uh, I have to admit, there were two competing feelings going on inside me. The first, that of a mother's heart that wanted to help these two small children get to their mom. 
And the other, a Karen. Who but wants to be a bitch. the other, <laughs> a sinking fear in my gut that was keeping the other feeling at bay. It was then I noticed that during the short conversation, I'd already opened the door a few extra inches, uh, which is why I was completely un. Oh, which I was completely unaware of doing. I stopped. Honey, why don't you give me your mother's number and I can call her myself? <laughs> another pause. They again look at one another. After a short moment, they turn back to me and the girl said, Ma'am, my little brother has to use your bathroom. Can we please come inside while you call our mom? And with that last statement, the little girl moved closer toward the door like she was going to just walk on in by me. As she did, she stepped into the light coming from inside the house and I got my first real good look at her. Solid jet black eyes. That's all I could see. That motherly instinct was gone and replaced by terror I don't think I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> what, Matt? What, Matt? I don't know. First reaction. It's Halloween. Like, let's, yeah, it is Halloween. The first look that she got at him. Ooh, spooky. Yeah, good for them. <laughs> like, that's a good costume. Like, yeah. I don't know. It could be. It could be. I could feel every hair on my arms and back of my neck standing at attention. I closed the door to where just my face was able to stick out. The little <laughs> <laughs> Why would you stick your face out? It's like Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Here's Johnny. Here's Johnny. <laughs> the little girl stopped and again <laughs> pleaded. Please, ma'am, we're really scared and alone out here. We have to come inside. Please help us. Then, like on cue, both kids began to whimper and cry. That's when the fear took over and I shut and locked the door. <laughs> <laughs> Two kids start crying immediately. Nope. Nope, can't do that. I'll call your mom if you give me the number, I shouted through the <laughs> door. Through the door. But I'm not letting you in my house. You're scary as bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I could still see them stand there on the porch, just staring at me through the glass pane. Okay, guys, this is the visual I have in my eyes. And Seth is working in his office. Here's a slam. He goes downstairs to see Kayla. Like, I'm not letting him in. And there's just two toddlers bawling their eyes out on the front porch. I also love that there's a glass window yes. right in the middle of the door yes. that you're, they're just looking at each other. Just, she uh, sees yeah. them crying. And I she's trust like, Kayla's judgment entirely. I go back to my office. <laughs> <laughs> Those kids aren't coming in my house. Probably got germs anyway. I, I, would probably, I, would, I would probably let them in the house very easily. Be like, all right, come on in. And that's why you would die. <laughs> Uh, let's see. You see, get some cool black eyes out of it. From John Hopkins no, University. What? <laughs> John the Hopkins University. Uh, That's a leap. There are multiple know. eye conditions. One of them, number six, is the crying blood, more significantly called cool, paramacolian. Crying blood is an extremely rare disorder. Number five, black eyes. There is an eye disorder known as aridinian which makes the eye appear completely black or devoid of an iris. In truth, there is a small ring, but it's really hard and not noticeable. So Could be one of them. the reason I said that it would be hilarious if these were just some awkward homeschool kids, you know, me and Max Goosen, <laughs> that have these black eyes as a condition and they're literally just trying to call their parents. And I feel like that is so dark be. and funny. You never know. It's like a lunchbox all over again. <laughs> Every time it does, it makes him laugh. I love that story. That's for a different podcast. <laughs> part of me wanted to run upstairs to my husband, but the bigger part didn't want to lose track of where they were. That would have freaked me out even more to not know where they were. <laughs> I just, I said, What's wrong, honey? Children. <laughs> After what seemed like forever, but probably only a few seconds, I decided I'd call my neighbor that lives across the street. As I made my way to the side table by our couch to my phone, I glanced at the back door. Chloe was nowhere to be found. We later found her in the guest room under the bed. When I got to my phone and started to look for his contact info, it was only then the kids stepped away from the door and began to walk to the street. As I did, I walked to the door to get a better look to see where they went, still not calling my neighbor. Uh, from the door, I could see that the kids were still standing under the street lamp nearest my house, staring at me. As I lifted the phone to my ear after calling, only then did the kids start walking down our street. Hmm. I met my neighbor out under the lamp once he was out there, but the kids were nowhere to be seen. 
Like I said, I don't believe in any of this stuff and had never even heard about black eyed kids before talking to my friend. What I really think, what I have to think, is these kids were just out yanking people's chain on Halloween night. But I will say this for them, they were good. Really good at it. They scared the shit out of me and my dog. And that was the tale of the black eyed kids on Halloween. That is a great Loudoun County story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like this lady had like it does no <laughs> no initiative to help these poor children who are just trying to get home. <laughs> they could be. They could All be. All they needed was one phone call. <laughs> <laughs> She's not even as good as prison. They give you one phone call. <laughs> Who sticks their head like this out of a crack window <laughs> or a door when they see something that they supposedly think is like probably going to do them harm? See, so that's the thing about this story that I think. So I'm going to read some facts about black eyed kids and kind of the lore about them. It's probably that information that people have like started to look into that is probably going to keep them from helping kids from now on if they see even the hint of any blackness around their eye. So. Black eyed kids will look like normal human children between the ages of six and 16, but with pale skin and completely black eyes. Uh, people who have been in close proximity to black eyed kids report a feeling of unease that washed over them. While nothing about the children's appearance, aside from their eyes, genuinely, genuinely frightened the people. Seems all... I just feel like these are just a bunch of albino kids. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, Shit, you're making me uncomfortable, kid. Like... <laughs> oh, these poor kids. Uh... <laughs> My phone? No, don't touch that. <laughs> like I said, kids got germs. <laughs> So while nothing about their appearance aside from their eyes uh, frightened the people, they still reported feeling uh, a range of anxiety to terror in their presence. Some people have also reported seeing black eyed kids that have talons for feet or other demonic talons? attributes. That'd be How sick. would you notice that? You look at their feet. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> They're not going to be wearing shoes. I, that's the thing. Like, wouldn't you cover them up with something? You might. Nah, if I had talents, I'd be showing them off every day. Climbing up everything, <laughs> perching on something. How dare you. <laughs> uh, but most sightings are seemingly normal children. Uh, Black-eyed kids are also commonly described as wearing dated clothing or dressing in a manner that is not typical of a normal child of their age. Black-eyed kids always ask for something. It is always something that involves being in close quarters with you. They will ask for a ride in your vehicle or to enter your home. The description. Socially awkward kids that are needy. <laughs> yes. And black eyes. <laughs> there are no reported stories. There are no reported stories of what happens when you let a black eyed kid into your vehicle or home. All stories come from people whose eerie feelings made them flee from the children. Do you remember the clown situation that happened? <clears throat> what if this Halloween all kids were like, this is how we're dressing? Imagine the chaos. <laughs> Be really bad for those kids. <laughs> They're not going to get <laughs> shit. <laughs> no one can call their mom yeah. to get home. Yeah. <laughs> like, but then, like, so there were a couple of clowns killing people. But then oh, yeah, nice. a lot of people got Did they ever kill I don't anybody? Know that they ever, I, well, yeah, I, I thought it was just like one? they showed up and they were stuff. Well, they would show up on like running trails too, just appear on the trail. Yeah. You know, people they get guns, stabbed guns. here and there. <laughs> so it's it just happens. a normal stabbing. He just happens yeah. to be in a clown costume. Honestly. It might be your fault if you're running on trail and you're like, oh, hey, that guy's in a clown suit. Let me run like really close to him. Why would you do that? If I see a guy in a clown suit, I'm at least on the <laughs> other side of the path. Like in 2016, clown signs reported of people disguised as evil clowns in <laughs> or crowded settings such as near forest schools. The incidents were reported in the United States, Canada, and subsequently in other countries and territory states during August 
2016. Sightings were first reported, it's also on the big screen so everyone at home can see it, reported in Green Bay, Wisconsin, in what turned out to be a marketing stunt for a horror film. Fucking awesome. That was literally the case that a business like, listen, let's just pay people to just scare the fucking shit out of everyone. Shout out Wisconsin. Yeah. Heaviest drinking state in the US. <laughs> <laughs> just scaring the, a bunch of drunk people. <laughs> The phenomenon later spread to many other cities in the U.S. By mid-October 2016, clown sightings and attacks, that's what I want to know about, have been reported in nearly all U.S. states, nine out of 13, well, there's more, okay, provinces, territories in Canada and 18 other countries. So we need clown attacks. That's what we need to find out right now. Were there clown attacks? There were clown sightings at the elementary school that I used to work at in West Virginia. In October is needing several new That's outdoor. Creepy. Yeah, it was in the playground. That's even creepier. Yeah. <laughs> reported ahead of time. reported on an alleged clown initiated purge or attack, which supposedly was to take place on Halloween Eve 2016. Clown purge. <laughs> Fucking hell, this is awesome. That's actually the fifth movie in the series, Clown Purge. It's coming out next summer. Yeah. <laughs> Hong Kong. Um, while there oh, were oh, no, okay. <laughs> no, is it going to go wrong? Okay. <laughs> yep, <laughs> you are correct, sir. While there is no widespread purge attacks as threatened, a family from Florida was attacked on October 31st, 2016 by a group of approximately 20 people. That would be fucking terrifying if 20 clowns showed up and started beating the shit out of you. What if it was it's just one of the really shitty members? circus? It would be so much better if it was just one person. <laughs> wouldn't it why because you're gonna start laughing at him. <laughs> I'm just laughing it's like what the fuck did he do if it was the whole imagine if if KLSF or Matt let's say you and Alex are walking down the street and then mm -hmm. 20 clowns got out of a car and just started beating the shit out of you and wait how big is the car wait, it's tiny <laughs> okay but I know she would be like what the hell did you do if well, everyone you're, attacked, you're asking me what would I do no, if clowns just started attacking me? Alex would probably be upset at you or whatever. Like Matt. at me? Well, I'm saying like, Matt clearly. Nah, she rides. She would be. <laughs> she would start <laughs> getting that. Yeah, start beating up bozo. <laughs> okay, then fine. I would clearly think most relationships would be like if only if something this ludicrous happened, they'd be like clearly you were in with the mafia. What would happen? That literally twenty crowns. Oh my gosh, you were never in the mafia. <laughs> Let's no, not discount saying, the mafia, man. Oh, that mafia. clown mafia, man. The worst <laughs> of them all. I would think you did something wrong because you were getting beaten up by clowns. Okay, let me rephrase it. <laughs> yeah. To if be fair, you, I would think that too if he got beat up by clowns was he did something wrong. And if, and if me and Seth are walking down the street and literally out of this little ass car, 20 clowns just started just kicking him and then just leave. I have questions. I'm sorry, Matt. Seth, I'd have questions, but if I was with you and the clowns started beating you up, I'm, I'm going at them too. No. Oh, oh, you're going after the clowns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was joining in with the clowns. Joining in, yeah. No. <laughs> Give me that nose, bozo. I'm gonna start kicking the shit too. <laughs> Students in Penn State University, they Michigan bark, University, bark were involved you know? in mobs that searched for clowns on campus after reported sightings. Campgrounds floated with rumors of clown attacks. So yeah, that's kind of like the issue there with the clown stuff. But I love how I like that the was picture. Just like, That's a really nice portrait of a clown on the right. I do like. They got that. him to stand still. They're like, "Don't attack me. We're just gonna get your picture real quick." I do like the idea though. <laughs> like it was a movie stunt that people took way too far as a prank. Yeah, but then like, it just stopped and no one said anything. Like, yeah. are we just not gonna be concerned about the clowns that just like were stalking people? No, they're gone. They moved on. They migrated. <laughs> migrated south the, the circus moved years. on you know, honestly yeah. this really should have been my scary thing in the news like, I'm sorry like we're finding some gems here the clowns didn't uh was it John Wayne Gacy didn't he dress up like a clown when he would kill so John Wayne Gacy didn't dress up as a clown as he killed he was actually a clown or he person. was a clown yeah okay in his life in more ways than one but yeah that's funny <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, he was like one of the most crime. prolific serial killers. He was oh fine. God, what if that time. was the song he had before he killed his victims? Like, da, 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 da. he starts pulling balloons out of your ass. Like, oh, what is this? Ah, oh, it's the rope I'm gonna kill you with. Oh, is this a knife? That's a magician. Never mind. It's not so, <laughs> your ass or his ass? <laughs> That'd so be alarming if he started pulling him. balloons out of my ass. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> how did those get there? Confused. So confused. <laughs> a mix of both. I think both of those uh, feelings would be running through me. 
along with a very odd feeling of a balloon coming out of my ass. <laughs> They're gonna say arousal. Okay. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> Wouldn't be that feeling. <laughs> so black eyed kids. <laughs> Casey, and he just let you go. I don't think he uh, let anyone go. No, if he's like, oh, hey, this is a turn on. He's like, all right, you're gone. Goodbye. Uh, well, isn't that what they uh, <laughs> they say if you're ever kidnapped is just to be so annoying that they just drop you off like at the next block? So you're saying be turned on by whatever he does? Like, oh, what's that? No, nope, that is not what I'm saying. <laughs> it could. What would you say? That could be an option, but you then also run the risk of being like sex slave. So. I was assaulted. <laughs> the oh, motto no. of spirits and ghost stories. <laughs> Rhino. Uh, but the great clown pandemic of whatever year, 2016. Continue. Uh, well, last couple facts about black eyed kids. Uh, the earliest reported sighting of a black eyed kid came from a journalist, Brian Bethel, in 1996. Uh, and the story has been added to internet creepypasta lore. Uh, but to this day, Bethel insists the incident was real and happened the way that he reported it. And in his case, he uh, he was like getting into his car and two kids with black eyes approached him asking to be let into his car because they forgot their money for the movies. I guess they were like near a movie theater and they wanted him to drive him home so they could get money and then drive them back to the movie theater reasonable okay really reasonable for two children to come up and ask a stranger for a ride home to go get money dirty mike and the gang trying to get in the place <laughs> what have they done so that's the thing like one of the uh facts was that They're no annoying. reported stories of what happens after because the lore is that um Black eyed kids have to be let in. So that's the whole thing. They constantly question you to be let in, either into your home or into your car, but this they can't actually come in. Sounds directly ripped from vampires. Yeah. Well, theories about black eyed kids are that they are vampires, aliens, or of demonic origin. That is all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> that is like <laughs> we are we are this close on this theory. It could be vampires. <laughs> Aliens <laughs> or demons. Well, the reason they say aliens is because there's lore about like men in black, which are like not Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, but uh like alien creatures that are in like black suits, but they're like typical description of like the grays. If you've ever heard any people talk about aliens, they're just like really slender and like have this sort of grayish tint to their skin and they have this almost human feel, but are just off. The same with black eyed kids. It's like, there's just something that's a little bit off from being human. Like they've been observing humans for years and are just mimicking it. So have you, had you heard of black eyed kids before this story? Yes. Not once for me, because I'm going to be honest. <laughs> so I was really intrigued by it. And it's partially the circumstances of like when you first hear something like sometimes there's a song that like really hits for you because it's like the circumstances when you heard it, I got it the, <laughs> that's the one for you <laughs> uh, i do like to think with the men in black series it's just guys that are really well dressed in a really horrible part of town <laughs> <laughs> it could be well, okay, so for, to that point, the reason they say aliens is they say sometimes you'll see, like, if black-eyed kids aren't let in and they leave, that they then, like, there'll be two men in black waiting for them. So there have been sightings of that. Now, to go back to when I first heard about uh, black-eyed kids, it was, uh, I was in California on a work trip, and... I had gotten up at two in the morning because my flight leaving California was at six. So, you know, you got to get to the airport like hour and a half, two hours early. It was an hour and a half. Still leave some hours in between. It was like an hour and a half to two hour drive from my hotel okay. to the airport because it was like way up in the mountains. Um, and so as I'm driving, I'm listening to a different podcast that talks about uh, oh, here's a, a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, it's a similar one. They talk about cryptids and other things. They talk about serial killers. They've got yeah, some different there, stuff. Hey, hey I'm not saying the name. I'm not giving, giving them free promotion. This is all about spirits and ghost stories. I was assaulted. It's uh, like uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, so I'm driving through the mountains, and it's one of those roads where it's like, just constantly serpentining like down the mountain so it's like turns you have to take at like 15 miles an hour it's pitch black because again just up in the mountains you don't have like the street lights there's no light pollution at all so pitch black i'm like sleep deprived because i really hadn't gotten much sleep throughout the week before that and i had fallen asleep at like midnight the night before running on two hours sleep driving through this dark ass mountain winding back and forth listening to a podcast about black eyed kid okay not a great mixture not a great mixture because I was so sleep deprived. I kept expecting to see one or two of them like standing on one of the curves of the road. And I was having that horrible thought of like, if I see kids standing in this curve, I'm picking the curve extra wide. <laughs> that was when I first heard about black eyed kids. <laughs> So let's not let's, drive let's dial around. back that. School zones. <laughs> or on Halloween night, yeah. I cannot drive around. Nope. Okay. Uh, yep. That, that actually remind. There was uh, one time I uh, took part in a haunted house when I was in Hawaii. We had a cool. It was like a big warehouse building where the people would um, take the staircase on the outside of the building, go through the top floor, and then take this old like. A crane elevator down to the basement where I was and the basement theme was like ironically clowns and killer clowns and whatnot the top part was uh like creepy medical asylum area and I remember there were these um three little girls who were daughters of like one of the colonels or something like that and of course they were dressed up with like dark shadowing over their eyes and whatnot they looked super creepy they did a really good job and so we finish up the haunted house and it's like probably an hour after we finished up because I had stayed back and talked with folks and I'm leaving the, the parking lot and there's a girl in this like gown just standing at the corner of the parking lot. No car around. It was just one of them. Mm. So it was either saw something or one of these girls is a genius and decided to just go stand like on the side of the street and creep people out as no. you know they're driving by. I like genius. That would be I like. I like to believe she was a genius. That was that was good. Why not both? A genius ghost. <laughs> a genius ghost. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. And guys, the moral of the story is: don't have kids. Don't have kids. Which because they could have black eyes and then it's going to be really bad for the rest of their life. <laughs> just ask to use your phone the rest of their life. <laughs> they never get a phone. Can so, I get a ride? Can I call my mom? So the moral like, of the story on. really is they will inconvenience you slightly. And like that's why <laughs> they'll ask for your phone. They'll ignore you. It's like all that stuff. <laughs> they are the worst. And so that gets to scary things in the news. And this one is a little bit of a whiz bang right here. Here we go. Ah... Uh, is Latin more effective in driving out demons and exorcist response? Is is Latin more effective than vernacular language in driving out demons? And exorcist answers this controversial question. I didn't know there's controversy over this thing. Hmm. My immediate how, answer is yes, of course it's more but effective. But I just love how the, <laughs> this next sentence starts. Whoever <laughs> been to a Catholic <laughs> We're talking about Latin. I'm just having an exorcism over here. An exorcism answers this controversial question. Should you actually speak Latin? The interviewer by ACI, CNN, Spanish language sister news agency. This is like, I don't know why it just made me laugh when I read this story of like, is Latin the best? We'll find out on a French network. It's like, it's just, I think that's kind of funny. A pre I'm reading ahead of you a bit, but <laughs> oh, go for the it. ministry Same. of exorcism. Yeah. Spain continue. has a ministry oh, of exorcism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is wild. <laughs> Said that many people wondered if it's better to use in the exorcism ritual of 1614 reformed by Pope Pius, the, the X, Y, the the tenth, eleventh, twelfth, is it twelfth? Okay, the pious the twelfth in nineteen fifty two. They wonder if it's better and more effective than ritual pronogamy. 
Promul promulgated. What was I saying? The official. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you see a demon, only one priest gets to fuck that person, okay? You gotta establish a relationship with them, court them a little bit. That's how you get the demon out. In the mouth. <laughs> no, that's how you work around this. Uh, if it's better and more effective than the ritual by St. John Paul II in the year 2000. So let's understand that in the present day, there are people in an organization, a government organization, that are arguing. Should we exercise people with the 1614 plan or should we exercise people with the 2000 plan? This is an argument that real people are well, having. I want to know more of the differences between the two plans as opposed to just language. Well, you can't because you can't see the TV. I can't. That is All right, well, we'll let Matt read this next part. Go for it. <laughs> In the first place, said the priest, who is also a liturgy professor, it's important to establish a theological principle, exorcism is a sacramental celebration of the church and therefore receives its efficacy from the prayer and faith of the church. Is it a celebration for the poor bastard that's having this happen, John? This, he stresses, is one of the differences <laughs> between sacraments and sacramentals. The sacraments are outward signs that communicate grace that are effective by themselves because their effectiveness comes from Jesus Christ himself. Mm. Amen. Who is the one who <laughs> instituted them? And they are neither more nor less than seven, as the Council of Trent you know, said. Honestly, yeah. I think churches would be able to bring more people to them if they did live exorcism, like during church service. Okay. No, that honestly would get me back. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, now this Sunday, we've got three exorcisms live. <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, yeah. Sunday. Live, live, live. <laughs> pay-per-view if you can't make it <laughs> this is great the spanish priest also said that actually spanish would be a great language for like a freaking like because you ever seen the spanish soap operas so i'm gonna go with the two best languages would be like swedish or german and here are the trains of thought german german's good, very harsh. aggressive yeah so it's like you really want to get that demon out. But if they respond to that as like, oh, no, fuck you. I'm going to stay in here. Then you do Swedish, which is very coaxing to get them out. Maybe I would get also on their say side. Japanese. Go on. Why? Because I would love to see priests dressed as samurai. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only reason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to stick with, the, I think, Latin. For you, sure the best. Yeah. Why so there are two For sure the best. I mean... It just is official, like I don't official. Know. that's just because you've only ever seen it's Latin the official used rule, probably like... in like movies or TV shows of exorcism. But does that mean it's the most effective? I think so, because I mean, you're saying Spanish would be, but Latin is the base of Spanish. Like Latin is the base of a lot of these languages that you're saying would be good to use as it. It's just like fair, he decorum. said Spanish. No, he said Japanese. <laughs> You said Spanish and Japanese. <laughs> I mean, Why not? I, I, have they done American? I, mean, I want to see one like done in English and like a real Southern American hey, accent. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, like, no. So here's the difference. Like your typical American the accent priest to English. also says that there's an exorcism. There are two types of prayers for, the each, for each of the ones that were discussed above that are done facing the devil directly. The first is what we call the prayer of supplication, which invokes divine help. The one that asks God to free the person, to protect the person who is being harassed, who is being mistreated by the devil. And he pointed it out. So basically, like, get on out of here, devil. Bad devil. <laughs> See, I think a uh, like, real Southern American accent would be great for an exorcism. Go on, get. <laughs> Go on, get. The second, he continued, is... What in tarnation? What are you doing here? It's a prayer of command, which is the prayer that only the priest authorized by his bishop directs straight at Satan. What the, what the fuck is the difference? <laughs> The fucking ego on this <laughs> yeah. priest. First of all, to think I directed this <laughs> directly to Satan. <laughs> Get out of here. Like, I don't want any of that little bureaucrat bullshit. He's Satan the source. might have nothing to do with it. You know, he could be off doing his own thing. One demon just happened to run amok and came and possess someone. <laughs> Satan's like, well, 
extra marks. We have a next week. He's doing things. That guy's doing stuff. great things. Okay, here we go. Here's the second gun. The second gun of this thing. Taurus explains that if an exorcist uses the ritual of 1614, he is actively, correctly, and is effective. And if an exorcist uses the one from the 2000, he is acting efficiently. E cursely. Well, Matt's right here to say the word. EFAP. <laughs> Seth is right here to say the word. <laughs> Seth is Matt. right here and cannot read the word because Seth is legally uh, blind and the uh, screen is small. Efficaciously. Efficaciously. So is he this is saying, hold on, hold on, hold on. because the church has pled his, her prayer and her faith in those rituals. <laughs> is this segment called scary stuff in the news or Tommy finds an article with the hardest words for him to pronounce? <laughs> Every time. Every single time. There's a snake. See it, guys? <laughs> what does a snake have to do with it? I'm so confused. All right. I mean, I stand by that, yes. The most efficient language to exercise a demon, Latin. Yep. I stick by it, but... I'm going Swedish and German. See, that? that's just two answers. Latin. I think you both could be used uh, in conjunction. You could use Swedish first, maybe coaxing them out. And if that doesn't oh, work, get yeah. harsh with the German. You want to come out to the little, <laughs> and little guys, demon. so if you thought that was weird, I decided we're going to have a new scary thing in the news. Because, again, it's scary stuff in the news. It doesn't have to be paranormal. And so here it is. Oh, please so, don't. So, no. man <laughs> poops out his penis due to rare condition. A 33-year-old uh, man poops from his penis and experiences erectile ejaculation due to ab abnormal passageway between his man's urethra and his rectum. Okay, and so I will say this is probably the scariest thing because it's I love, real. I love the highlights, though. I love the highlights here on the side. Uh, so you can't see it. Just, just bear with me here. Um, a third Same, thing, so excited. Like sports center. Highlights. <laughs> Old man. Na -na -na. <laughs> <laughs> 33 year old man poops from his penis, experiences rectal ejaculation. Is this top 10 or not top 10? Uh, okay. If you can come out of your dick, uh, come out of your. <laughs> <laughs> cut that, cut that, cut that. <laughs> Do you not? <laughs> if you can come out of your ass, that is a hell of a trick. Um, he had noticed unusual symptoms for two years and decided. <laughs> Milk it's called lactation titties. he said a big, uh, that's the other story about uh, run. Uh, doctor experiencing pain in his testicles you know the guy that made art with like semen oh. and like oh, milk okay. and, and the comma and he was fitting for like Catherine with <laughs> he had been in there for three week coma okay so this is what I love <laughs> he'd been in a three week coma nice I'm trying I'm trying guys Okay, what I love about this is they state three things on here, but they bury the most important part to the very end. So, what you should know is the man has an issue with the way the fluids in his body work and where they come out. That's number one. Number two, he notices unusual symptoms. Okay, fine. Two years, fine. What they bury is, it was fitting that, you know, he had a catheter and he was in a coma for three weeks because he was doing fucking PCP and cocaine, which literally... As soon as I read that, I didn't have to read anymore. It's like, that explains everything. I don't really need it anymore. Except why it took two years. Sure, the catheter played no small part. Well, did it nah. say he was having symptoms for two years? Yes. I thought it was like he had no symptoms for two Guys, years. Guys, I will then, link like, the week. rectum story, and you can read it you yourself. You really don't Ooh, have pictures. You <laughs> also don't know what he did while he was on the catheter. It's true. And that's the that's real the mystery. Thing. Nobody knows. That's why it took two years to go to the doctor. Because let's be honest, Johnny comes out his butt, he knows what's going on. What the hell does that mean he knows what's going on? What's he that code for? What happened? Chip in a two-year bender? Pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. That's fair. I, mean, I might be embarrassed if that was happening to me, too. Closing thoughts? Last time I went to get a physical, they said, "Don't come back. You're too young." So, like, even if I was, <laughs> no, don't come, don't come they back. They just be like, "Yeah, go ahead, 
we don't want to hear. Um, okay. Uh, should you go to a licensed doctor? I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> thought I'd live in a city, you know. <laughs> Do normal things, go to a normal doctor. Is he in a building or was it a man just wearing a white coat on the street? <laughs> oh, no coat. No, <laughs> oh, no coat. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Guys, this has been fun. Thank you for making it this long with us for two years. We got one more in the special two for years? week 52. What? Wow. <laughs> week 52. Thank you for helping us make it one year. Next we should time. have two episodes. <laughs> and next time, we're going to we'll do, an- we'll year. do another special next year. Maybe, guys, for a uh, two-year anniversary, I'll actually be on, like, edibles. How about that? That'd be fun to have me read on edibles. And probably should start with something lighter. I'll try, like, harder liquor. How about that? <laughs> guys, thank you for coming out here. Uh, like, sorry, subscribe to the channel. Wow. Carl, you want to come, like, sign us off? <laughs> I'm a little drunk. Thanks for tuning in, Spirits and Ghost Stories. We appreciate you guys. Love you. Bye. Woo!